so that we can know you and know the Father. Lord, I just pray that this would be a time of intimacy with you, of unity with the body. But Lord, just open up the heavens.
looks like. It's not about what your circumstances are. But seeing it from the heart, I know sometimes it's hard when we're disappointed, when we've been leaning on a word and on a scripture that we haven't seen manifested. But church, we have to believe. We have to stand on it. We don't lower the word of God to match our experiences and our circumstances. No, we raise our level of faith until what we're reading in the scriptures is what we're living out and what we're seeing. Because he is faithful. He is faithful. of my 
my Savior. Spirit, lead me when my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior.
mercy is never ending One more time, can be the fire with a psalm. The first verse of the psalm says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. <laughs> we love you, O God, our strength. And now I want to go to the end and then I'll read some of the center of the psalm. It says, Great salvation he brings to his king. This is David that wrote the song. And shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. Such a steadfast love that it wasn't just to David, but it was to his offspring forever. David understood how deep the love of God went. This is a common psalm. I don't know if y'all recognize it. It's Psalm 18. But do you know what the song, it says, my enemies pursued me, but you overtook them. You gave a wide place for my steps under me and my feet did not slip. With the merciful, you show mercy. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. But do you know how it started out? It's talking about God and how God made the darkness his covering, his canopy around him, thick clouds. It's talking about how angry God was, that the earth reeled and rocked the foundations as the mountain trembled and quaked because he was so angry that smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth, glowing coals, flames forth from him, from God. That's from who? Does that, but it's a love psalm. Do you see? David started out, I love you, O oh Lord, and ended with, oh God, your love, your steadfast love, not just for me, but for the generations after me. And yet he was talking about how God is our warrior, God is our refuge, how God makes our feet like deer feet so that we can climb and scale mountains and we will not slip, right? How he will take down our enemies. It is love. So if you feel like you've been battling some enemies, if you feel like your feet may slip at any moment, if you feel like you just can't get ahead of the game, like you're hiding all the time, like you're taking one step forward but ten steps backward, remember God loves you. That he has a plan for you. That he has not forsaken you. That he is your refuge. We must remember that that was a love psalm, right? A psalm of war. A psalm that just shows God's fierceness and anger towards those who do not walk in his righteous ways. So Lord, we praise you. Lord, your love is relentless. You are relentless after all of us because you know all of the plans that you have for us. You know all of the blessings and all the promises that you have available to us. And your love is relentless. And Lord, sometimes your ways don't make sense to us, but we just say tonight in faith, we don't care. We want your ways anyway. And we thank you, Lord, for loving us. And we love you. 
Uh, well, welcome everybody to Impact Thursday night. I'm Meredith Limoges. Um, we've got a couple of speakers tonight, Joanna and Dallas, and then um, we'll come back up later and really just kind of see what the Lord has. Uh, after our teaching portion is normally our time of ministry, so yeah, we're just going to let the Holy Spirit lead tonight. I think he's going to have something special in store for us. Um, so at this point, I am going to go ahead and ask Nathan and Trickin to come up and give our holy announcements. Thank you, Nathan. Announcements are always holy, <laughs> for sure. <clears throat> So um, welcome, everybody, to Impact Thursday Night. Uh, my name is uh, Nathan Entrican, and um, here we are at Impact Ministry Center. We're located at 2260 Holly Springs Parkway in Holly Springs, Georgia. Uh, encourage you guys to uh, come out and join us. And um, uh, for those that are watching online, welcome. Uh, and on YouTube, welcome. Um, some people may ask, you know, what is it that we do here? What is Impact Ministry Center? Well, what we are, we're a training and equipping center. Um, and what we believe is that everyone has a gift that the Lord has placed inside of them. And what we want to do is we want to help you activate that gift. Because if you haven't noticed, you know, times are, are very interesting. And I think that the Lord has placed us at this moment, at this time, to have maximum impact for his kingdom. And, you know, how do we do that? Well, it's, be, it's the gifts that he's placed inside of us. So these gifts aren't necessarily to be, you know, for, uh, inside the four walls of, of the church. Well, they are. Uh, because I think, you know, ministry needs to happen inside the four walls, but I think ministry also needs to happen outside the four walls. And so what we want to do is we want to um, help you, teach you how to use those those gifts, you know, whether you have a worship gift, whether you have an announcement gift like me, uh, you know, whether you have uh, teaching gifts like Dallas and, uh, and uh, you know, several others that we've, uh, that we've had, you know, come in. And um, we want to help you learn how, how to do that. Most importantly, what, what, what we want to help you learn to do is hear the voice of the Lord. Because I think if you can connect with what the Lord is telling you and you know it's the Lord, then he's going to be able to use you in those situations that you come into every single day in your life where just a word or a deed or an action can change the course of someone's destiny. And so it's all about his kingdom. So that's what we do here uh, at Impact Ministry Center. And so I encourage you to join us. Uh, we're here every Thursday night at 7 p.m. And uh, we also have been doing uh, prayer. Now, we're not having it this um, Friday, but we've been doing prayer uh, uh, every Friday, uh, a very focused time of prayer uh, from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, so I would encourage you to come out and join us. Uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have it next week. Uh, so I encourage you to come out and, and join us uh, for that. Uh, also, um, we do have offering buckets that are located at the corners of the room and uh, encourage you, if the Lord leads you, to please uh, you know, donate. Uh, we use it to funnel back into the ministry to uh, keep the lights on and continue the training. No one gets paid here, uh, but that's what it goes for. So I uh, would encourage you to just, um, if the Lord leads you, to please uh, do, do that. So I guess at this point in time, let's bring up Miss Dallas. All right. And she is just, uh, she's, she's a, a wonderful woman of the Lord, and uh, I love her. She's like one of my own daughters, I feel like, and she's just, uh, you know, I'm so looking forward to what she has to share tonight. So do you mind if I pray for you? Okay. Lord, I just thank you for Dallas. I thank you, Lord, for the heart that you've placed inside of her, Lord, just the, the wisdom, Lord, in her relationship with you. And, Lord, I just pray that tonight, Lord, that she would just be able to hear your words and, Lord, Lord, to communicate your words, Lord. And I just, I, I'm so thrilled, Lord, just to see the person that she has become. And, uh, and I love her so much. And thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. See, I left you the holy clicker. So, so you should be uh, this way. All right. There you go. Okay, um, so tonight um, I'm going to talk about the mind of Christ. I probably need to turn me up some, a little bit. <laughs> um, 
So in 1 Corinthians 2.16, it says, but we have the mind of Christ. So um, what does that actually look like? And what is Paul really saying in these verses? Um, that's what I'm going to try to unfold for you tonight. Um, so to understand what Paul was saying at the end of this chapter, we must start at the beginning. So I'm going to read in 1 Corinthians 2. If you have your Bibles, I'm not putting it on the screen. <laughs> I will put some of it on the screen. Not yet. No. <laughs> All right. Um, in verse 1, it says, And when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God. For I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my message and my preaching were not in persuasive words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith would not rest on the wisdom of men, but on the power of God. Yet we do speak wisdom among those who are mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away. But we speak God's wisdom in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God predestined before the ages to our glory. The wisdom which none of the rulers of this age has understood, for if they had understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But just as, just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard, and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man, except the Spirit of the man, of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we have also which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them, because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Um, I don't know about you, but I've probably read this a million times over the years. And I've said I had the mind of Christ a million times too, not really knowing what it meant <laughs> until the Lord really gave me this revelation about uh, a week or two ago. Um, so Paul started out by saying that it wasn't the wisdom um, of a man that we were listening to, but instead it's God's wisdom that we should be listening to. Um, and he was speaking that to the Corinthian church and to all of us. <laughs> so in verse 6, 7, and 8, um, God's wisdom was like a, a mystery that he was talking about, and Paul talks about the mystery of God a lot throughout his um, books that he's written. Um, and this mystery is of salvation and of his love for us. And his love is, is very unique. It's not something that we can comprehend sometimes. Um, I know that I can't love all of you without the Holy Spirit's help because just we're human, right? <laughs> so, um, that's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about is how we really need the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ and in, in every area of our life. Um, so I'm going to pull up this. Um, we're really going to spend a lot of time in verses 10 through 13. So, um, it says, for to us, God revealed them through the spirit for the spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. So in verse 10, um, God revealed this mystery to us through the spirit. Therefore, we must have the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit searches everything, all, all, everything that we ever would want to know. He searches everything. So he knows everything about us. The Spirit also knows everything about the people around us. So um, when we're going about our day, we can be like, hey, if we're looking at someone, he may give us something for someone else. But if we're not being attentive to that, we won't know. Um, the Spirit knows the depths of God. Um, Let's see here. Where am I? Yes. Okay. Um, I just, when I read that, I was just like, whoa. I was reminded of Ephesians 3, 18 through 19, um, which I'm going to read for you if you're not familiar with it. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Um, it says, May, I'm going to start actually with verse 17. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. 
So he was talking about the depths in Ephesians as well. And, and here he's talking about the Holy Spirit's the only one who knows the depths of God. And that's the only way we can know that depth of his love for us. So, and let's see. Okay. And then verse 11. <laughs> I'm off my notes, which is not good. <laughs> okay. So for whom, for who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of of the man which is in him, even so the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. So only we know what we're thinking. Um, no one else can know what we're thinking. Um, obviously the Spirit knows what we're thinking, but none of you know what I'm thinking. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. Let's, let's think about this for a minute where he says, even so the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. We have the Spirit inside of us, and the only way we can know what God thinks about us is through the Spirit. The only way we can know what is on the heart of God is through the Spirit. The Spirit will whisper, whisper things throughout the day, saying things like, you are loved, you are beautiful, you are worthy, you are enough. Um, how does this word that we are reading become a living, breathing word, but by the Spirit? So this entire book that we're reading from was God-breathed, and there's an abundance of wisdom throughout it that we can only be revealed through the Spirit. Um, let's see. That is why every time we sit down to read this word, we should invite the Holy Spirit in. Every time. Because he'll give us something if we ask him. He'll reveal something to us. And I promise you, he will, because he does it every time. <laughs> every time I sit down, I get something new, even if I've read it 500 times. <laughs> All right, so verse 12. Um, now we have received... Not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. So we don't have the spirit of the world, which would be the spirit of Satan and all everything that comes with that. But we have the spirit of God. So only we can, we can only know by the spirit. So God gave us the Holy Spirit to help us, and only the Holy Spirit can reveal to us what God has given us. We can only come to know the promises of God through the word and the spirit revealing those through the word. And this Bible is full of gifts of God. So many promises that he's given us in this book. Um, and I've really never seen the scripture in this way, so I would have never seen it without the Spirit of God. Um, and then verse 13 says, Which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. So the Spirit is our teacher. Um, he is our helper. And Jesus said this before he was um, taken up. Um, he said, I am going to send you a comforter, encourager, teacher, and helper. And in John, um, I was reminded of this verse, John 16, 13 through 15, when I was reading this. And it says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative. By whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take a mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he takes a mine and will disclose it to you. So the Spirit is our guide, and as I said, he is our teacher. So we must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. We can, we can miss so many things if we are distracted or focused only on ourselves. We may miss what God wants to do in that person next to us. We may miss a prompting to pray for someone or just pray. So we must be led by the Spirit. Um, we cannot listen to human wisdom um, all the time. It's actually good to go and sit and listen to people, though. If, you're, if you know that they're spirit-filled, you're going to have the wisdom from God, right? Um, and not all of it sound wisdom, so we have to be careful who we're listening to. Um, if we are not being taught by the Holy Spirit and those who are led by the Spirit, we are not getting wisdom from God. This will make it really easy for us to be led astray, especially in these end times that we're living in. Um, it's going to be very easy to be deceived, so we must have the Spirit helping us. Um, in this verse, it says that the Spirit combines spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. So when we're speaking out the words that he has given us, it becomes living and breathing. It is powerful. And what did God do in the beginning? He said, and there was light. He said, and there was. Um, these thoughts that the Spirit gives us then can be um, powerful weapons spoken out of our mouths. So when we, any verse that we take in this Bible, when we speak it out, it becomes powerful and living and breathing and has the ability to create things. So, yeah. <laughs> so, verse 14 through 
So they, these words have the power to turn things around for the better or for the worse. So we can speak bad things out of our mouth and it will create bad things because that's what our words do. Um, so when we take these thoughts that the Spirit gives us, these words from the Bible, we are literally speaking the thoughts of God. I thought that was really profound as he did that. All right, so verse 16, which is really the key verse. I'll switch there. Okay. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So without the Spirit, we cannot have the mind of Christ. For years I have said I have the mind of Christ, and not truly knowing what that was, but I always thought I had, to, I had to do the work. I had to be the one that changed my thoughts or changed the way I, you know, always just try harder. That was what I thought. Um, that's how I would get the mind of Christ, which is not really how it works. <laughs> and, you know, if I got in the Word more, if I was striving more, that's, that's always what I thought. <laughs> and this changed, this changed me. So, but that's not what transforms your mind. Yes, you must be in the Word, but without the Spirit, you aren't really transforming anything. Um, we must be spending time praying in the Spirit and reading the Word of God in order to have the mind of Christ. We have to have the Spirit ministering to us through these avenues. Um, we must give heed to the Spirit. We must let Him speak to us, and then we must speak what He gives us out. Sometimes it may look like praying in the Spirit. Um, we don't know what we are praying, but the Spirit does, and He knows who it's for or what it's for. So we just need to be a willing vessel that can be used for the glory of God. Um, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. The Spirit may tell us to go pray for a person or encourage a person. Um, and if we don't know why, but he does, he knows what the person needs. So we just have to be listening to what the Holy Spirit's saying. Um, I was actually, I wanted to share this story because this is kind of how this worked for me. Um, I was actually part of a retreat this last weekend at our church that was Encounter. And I helped this time. Last time I was on the other side, which is great. Um, but we were praying the Spirit a lot this weekend um, in the different sessions, just really trying to make sure the Spirit stayed in that room or in that space as these people are getting ministered to and getting literally changed, their lives changed. Um, and it gave me strength to make it through that weekend because, let's just be honest, it's really tiring serving <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, and that's a great amount of serving. So um, as I was in the, um, one of those sessions, there was one girl in particular that the Lord really... Um, just pointed out to me, and it was almost like she was the only one I cried for in one session. I'm like, really, Lord? <laughs> What's going on here? Um, and it was just like he was showing me how much he loves her, and without the Holy Spirit, I would never know that. Like, I wouldn't be able to see that for her, and it's not something you can really feel naturally. Like, you're not going to feel love for someone like that naturally, because we're human. <laughs> so um, he allowed me to feel that depth of her love, and I could, I could feel... Like, I don't know. It was crazy. So, and then I was sitting in another session, like right after that, and he's like, you need to go write her a letter. I was like, really? <laughs> right now? I'm supposed to be doing this. So, um, thankfully, I had enough time to just go sit down and do that for her. And I don't know her. I, for, I don't know her at all. Um, but I could tell how much the, love, the Lord loved her, and he just wanted me to tell her that. So, that was something that I would never have been able to do without the Holy Spirit, because I would have known that she needed that, right? And I just know, like, the transformation from her when she walked in on Thursday to Saturday evening was incredible. So it was all worth it, right, <laughs> to see that. So what I'm saying here is we cannot live without the Spirit. We cannot have a fulfilled life without the Spirit. We will not be able to have revelations like this without the Spirit of God. Um, we cannot read this word every day without the Holy Spirit, or we will not gain anything of value. You'll just be reading to be reading. Um, then when we invite the Holy Spirit into that time, he will show us something new every day. This is the only way we can have the mind of Christ, is to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us through this word, then allowing those words to transform our minds. Then in turn, we speak out the words that transform in the lives of others and our own lives. So the way we have the mind of Christ is by the Spirit. He is the only one who knows what God thinks and the depths of God. We must be willing vessels that he can use to reach this lost and dying world. Having the mind of Christ is having that spiritual awareness, just as Jesus walked on the earth, being led by the Spirit. So must we. We should be doing the same exploits that Jesus did and greater. So let the Spirit lead you. Let it renew your mind every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
reads reason why I taught online. Except I don't have beautiful PowerPoints, so <laughs> there's a story behind that, but we won't go there. So I have scriptures that will be put on white background. I'm a little jealous, but I'll probably need to pray in the spirit so I don't get Oh, wow. Never mind. My husband did it. <gasps> Yay. Yay. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> yeah. He, it's a benefit. Nathan's one of his spiritual gift. Well, it's, not, it's a natural gift. It's a talent. Hey, I'm learning about the difference between gifts and talents. It's a talent. He's a computer guy. So a couple of you know that around here. So um, I'm Joanna and Joanna Intrican. I'm married to Nathan. I'm part of the team here and I'm super excited about what I'm bringing. I love how the Lord set me up with Dallas because I'm going to pull on that last scripture because we were talking about the mind of Christ. She pointed a lot about praying in the spirit, even her example when she was an encounter this weekend. Um, I'm telling you, praying in the spirit is so huge. You know, in the beginning, when you get filled with tongues, you're kind of like, okay, how do I do this? And I feel weird. And is this real? But then when you get past that, you start to get into a realm and then you've got like this whole language. You like could go to the nations and prophesy to a village and be speaking the language. I mean, sometimes I wonder like, what is this? But, um, but anyways, I want to speak on this gift. It's coming out the gift of tongues. This is something I'm hearing a lot of ministers talk about in this season. I believe I know personally without this gift, I wouldn't have made it as a Christian. Because when I came into the kingdom, we'll just pour on real quick. I was in my bedroom. This was 30 years ago, 20 years old. I did sex, drugs, rock and roll, right in the club, all of it before I was even supposed to be there. And um, anyways, that night I'd even had a friendly sick pack. I went to bed. God came in my bedroom in a dream and said, look, I'm here. I'm giving you a last call. But it's my last call. You don't want to resist this one. And um, so I wrestled with him. I didn't, I was, I really wasn't convinced. I knew who he was. I knew where I was living wasn't great, but I knew where I was going was probably much worse. But anyways, after 20 minutes of resisting him, I sat up with the glory of God in my room and surrendered. But the thing that grieved me was I didn't want to say I was something and not be it. Well, what I didn't know, I didn't grow up with the Bible. I didn't know what the word of God said. And I said, God, give me the power to live for you. Whoa, that was the Holy Spirit telling me how to pray. And when I asked for that, I was full of the spirit in my bedroom. I didn't speak in tongues that night, but I had one Christian friend, spiritful pastor, which is how I wound up up here in Canton. His son and I were friends. I drove up the next morning, met him that Sunday, went to church, and he just did a cursory altar call so we could make it official, you know, so nobody at church would reject me. And, um, and he laid hands on me. It's a joke. But we laid hands on me, and I spoke in tongues. It was like this language came out of me. I'm like, they're like, are you okay? And I'm like, well, yeah, when everything God has. I didn't know enough to know that. Some people had a problem with it. I just got to step into it. But God was good for me because I didn't need any more confusion. I had to come out of the world, and that was enough for him to deal with. So on that, this gift is, to me, speaking in tongues is the most beautiful gift, and it has helped me so many times. And being that I have a prophetic gift, it is, it is a huge help because you can pray in the Spirit, and God can give you things. So I'm going to get this, I'm going to go over, I pulled up the Amplified from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and it was 13, and it says, we also speak of these words, of these things, not in words taught or supplied by human wisdom, but in those taught by the Spirit, and I believe that's referring to speaking in tongues, combining and interpreting spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Often, it's interchangeable that praying in the Spirit is also praying in tongues, and you'll find that interchangeable in Scripture for those being guided by the Holy Spirit. So you see how important praying in tongues is having the mind of Christ. It really, we're not going to be able to do it. I'm not saying that God's not merciful. I'm never going to put him in a box. He can do all things, but it is way better when we do it his way. It just works. And it might be because he's God, but hey. So, okay. So I'm going to go right into it. Um, all right. And um, I have giant notes for myself. So I'd, I could come up here and deny that I, don't, I need glasses to read this. So see how big my print is? I'm like, 
It's a mess. So it's really not that long. But anyways, okay, I'm going to build a case here for God talking about this. Um, so John the Baptist prophesies about Jesus and how he will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3.11 says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So right there, we're getting um, hints who Jesus is. So Jesus actually goes through being baptized. And we know he did that water baptism because he wanted to fulfill all the things for you and I. And so he went and got baptized. And at that moment, the Holy Spirit, we also know that when he got baptized, he didn't begin his ministry on earth till after he was baptized. Shortly after that, he went into the wilderness, but he began his ministry um, after that. So it says in Jesus, Matthew 3, 16, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. I did look that word up because alighting is not a word I'm really accustomed to but it just means that it, it came over him and, and hovered over him and so the spirit was doing that. So then Jesus goes on to tell his disciples, go and wait for the promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the upper room before they go out to minister. Now I'm going to stop here. So Jesus is spirit. So we know that when Jesus was baptized in the water, he was also filled with the spirit. Then he began his miracle ministry, moving in, healing signs and wonders. And it's important to know that because there's some teachings out there that try to make Jesus divinity on earth. If Jesus is divinity on earth, then me and you don't get to walk out the things he told us we could do. That's why it's very important to reject that because it was being filled with the spirit that enabled him to move in ministry, which means you guys can move in all that ministry, and he said, in greater works, would you, we, we do, because we are going to be filled with a Spirit's promise, which is what he's talking about here. He said, and so on Acts 1, 4, it said, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which say, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized you with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. So, um, so we know that 140 were up there on the day of Pentecost. Now, there were many more that were listening to him when he walked around. It was like 500 or more, but only 140 showed up. So that's a little indicator there that um, not everybody's going to want this. So it's really good to not let this be a dividing thing in the body. You know, some people will get saved, and, and I can't understand that being the person I want everything God has, but not everybody does, and we don't want to let this be like, uh, you're that denomination, we don't, you're this. No, we, we create an atmosphere that there's more, and when they're hungry and the Spirit's done it, they'll be asking hey, what's different about you? And they'll want the more, but not everybody sometimes at first will, will do that. So, um, <clears throat> so the day of Pentecost comes, which is the day the Holy Spirit fell in the believers upper room and the church was born. They were each baptized with fire, filled with the spirit and spoken tongues. So in Acts 2, we know this fat verse, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues as of fire, and it laid on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there are many different debates where it was at language was it just heavenly language? I think it was all of it. Now we know that they spoke in each other's native because scripture says, but I believe that, you know, some, probably not everybody spoke in a known, an unknown known tongue, meaning they were all right there at the moment, you know, in Jerusalem, but they had their native heritage. They were speaking in that language and only the Holy Spirit could do it. 
And so there again, I'll, I'll emphasize, I believe this experience is available to every believer and the gift of tongues, which is often known as praying in the spirit or prayer language, is one of the most valuable weapons of our warfare in the kingdom, but often overlooked. It's often misunderstood or in sometimes a little bit frowned upon because it's such a supernatural gift that makes some people uncomfortable. But those believers in the kingdom that operate in this gift in a daily way become the most effective, fruitful members in the kingdom. And so I'm going to go over some of the benefits with scripture. And I purposely pulled up these scriptures because um, some of you come from one of my favorite churches, World Harvest. And Pastor Merritt, man, he'd be back there screaming out, yeah, you know, um, with this message. But he was one of the first ones that really, you know, you go in his prayer meetings and you don't speak English for the first 15 to 30 minutes. And if your tongue gets stuck, he's like, all right, that's stuck. Keep going, keep going. And that man changed me. I just want to encourage you. I grew, I'm a wild woman for Jesus because a part of what that man put in me, he's, he's the real deal. And I love he and Pastor Linda, um, like, they didn't know what to do with me because of my prophetic was a little out of the box. But, but once we got past that, and, um, but he, they have been our best cheerleaders and supporters, and I love them. But I say that because that is what grew me. It's like, and I find in my own walk, because even in prophetic circles, I mean, let's just get real. We prophesy, but we don't really pray in tongues, or we don't do it in front of each other. We might pray in our breath. And I think we got to change that, not because we're trying to be weird, but because we want to encourage each other. This gives amazing, and we're going to stir and spur each other up. And so this is what I think the Holy Spirit's doing. I mean, look at the world. Look where we're at, and the church is waking up. We've got to be the light, and we're not normal. Let's just face it. You're here on a Thursday. You have, listen, you know? But that's a good, not normal, because we're going to move and the things that were promised for our day. So, um, so one of the things that um, it's an evangelistic tool, which right there with your gift, I'm um, right here in Corinthians 14, 22. Plus, I haven't been flipping my scriptures because I don't. Sorry, guys. I get excited and I forget about that part. Okay. So, wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serve, not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. So, um, actually tongues is for the unbeliever. And we would actually think the opposite, would we not? So, um, because we would think, well, they're going to think I'm weird if I do this. But not so. But I'm going to give you a hint why, too. Because there is the gift of tongues and interpretation, which is a separate gift. Those two gifts combined is equal to prophecy. So I'm going to read that. It's, um, it's 1 Corinthians 14, 5. I would that you spake with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. For greater is he that prophesied than he that speaks with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. So that was a mystery in studying this. I already said, I kind of overlooked it. Um, Hagen's really good about bringing it out. But the reason, have y'all noticed like in most of the spiritual churches, like hardly anybody does tongues interpretation, like you know, where you get this pause. and But now I understand because if the gift of prophecy isn't flowing, that gift won't flow because it's really prophecy. But it's a different way to do prophecy. So think of it this way. If you're speaking in tongues in a congregation and you have unbelievers and then someone interprets, so now it's acting like prophecy. So it's edifying. The, not only is it a sign, like, what is that? But now the word of the Lord's come out, and they're like, how the heck did that person know that? And then and you see the supernatural. So it's just really beautiful, and then it keeps God in control. So, so I think that's really cool. So then, um, okay, and let's see. I was going to. I don't know what I did there, but anyway, and so, and then also here's another, the scripture in Acts 2, 4, it said, um, it said, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is also evidence of it being evangelistic. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when they 
when this was no, um, noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, aren't these all Galileans that speak? And how do we hear each man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Corinthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Capitana, we won't even try that, in Pontus and Asia. Um, yeah, I'm not a great scholar, so we'll just, yeah, we're not going to try that one. But anyways, the P words, in Egypt and the parts, hey, I'll pray in tongues, I might get it. And in the parts of Libya, about serene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Greeks and Arabians, we do hear them all speak in tongues and wonderful works of God. So up into, they, they're all believers. They're like, wow, this gives moving. And they're like, this is crazy. So then there's another one for it. I loved what Dallas pointed out about, you know, when you are ministering, like you were in a counter and received, but now you're ministering. It is way better when you get to be on the other side ministering because there's just this grace of God that comes through you when you serve others. And that is also, but God wants you to get healed first. Well, one of the gifts of tongues is that it edification for oneself. First Corinthians... Think. First Corinthians 14, 4, he that speak in an unknown tongue edify himself, but he that prophesy edify the church. Strengthens us. Okay, and this is the point I want to point out about this. Um, we, it also strengthens us in our weaknesses. We don't, this is one that blew me away. Often when we think of we need healing, we think about going to lay hands on people and getting healed. I'm all for that. But do you know that if you pray in the Spirit, that God will actually heal you? That he'll release healing? That the Holy Spirit will release that inside of you? So think about you're having a hard day. You're going from place to place. You start praying in the Spirit, and this oppression can lift off of you. Or you'll, you know, have... So it, it strengthens us physically, emotionally, and in area, every area. And this is Romans... 826. Likewise, the Spirit also helps with our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit in, in, makes intercession for us with groanings which, not, which can't be uttered. So then also it helps us to pray the perfect will of God over a situation when we don't know how to pray. I, I tell people often we um, help out at another church and we helped with a prayer team and we told them pray in the spirit. If the, if the people don't come up and have particular need, I said, just pray in the Holy Spirit and let the Lord show you. And sometimes you just need to pray over them in tongues anyway, because you might not even need to speak an English word. And that is a beautiful way. And often before, um, I, I don't do it as much here, um, and I really probably should get, you know, more proactive because, like I said, we're in a prophetic room. We don't pray in tongues. I don't even understand. But it's just because, let me just tell you this. If the enemy cannot stop you, he water you down. And so it happens to all of us. So we just kind of keep stirring ourselves up. So, um, so praying in the Spirit will help you know how to pray for yourself, for others. And it says also, likewise, the Spirit also... Um, Okay, I was, I did that one twice. Okay, and it brings rest to us and removes the weariness. So this is a beautiful scripture from Isaiah. For with, and this was a prophecy. This was a prophecy about us, guys. For with stammering lips and another tongue, we will he speak to his people, to whom he said, "This is the rest wherewith you may be caused to weary the rest, and this is a refreshing, yet that you would not hear." So when we pray in tongues, it brings rest to our soul. So that's another thing. And then also, uh, how many of you have heard this, you know, Satan can't hear your tongue language, right? And I, and I believe that, but right here's a scripture that talks about that. We're communicating mysteries to God and ourselves. And Satan can't comprehend what we're saying. It says, for he who speaks in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understand him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. And then it helps us to understand, and this is what Dallas was talking about. Praying in tongues helps us to understand and interpret the word of God. I had one minister tell me that whenever he goes to read his Bible, he prays under his breath and the Holy Spirit 
so that he can interpret what he's reading. I thought that's really good because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when I'm reading, I do that daily Bible. Sometimes I go sleepy, especially when you're going through the genealogies. I'm like, duh, 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 duh. you know, and it's like, okay, let's pray in the spirit and focus. So, you know, and um, so anyways, but he, um, okay. And then um, it also strengthens us in our walk with God, causing the faith inside of us to be strong. You know, um, this is from Jude. It says, the scripture is going to be for the next three, but it says, but, but ye beloved, let's see this one. Okay. Yeah, here we are. Okay. But ye beloved building up yourselves and your most holy faith, praying the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking unto the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I believe like this is where we live right now. Like this is where we're at. And if you think about this, um, when there is a faith that was deposited at the new birth, and a lot of people think that this scripture means that God deposits more faith, but really it doesn't because we get the measure of faith at the new birth. We all have that faith. What this does is it begins to bring that faith out and strengthen it. It's already in and it, it starts to release it. So let's say you're believing God over a situation like you need a job or something. You're praying in the tongues and all of a sudden now you're getting faith. Your prayers are aligning with God's heart and the Holy Spirit inside of you is causing you to believe God for that thing. And you're starting to pull it down out of heaven. That's what happens. So that that's awesome. And then um, it increases our love walk. Dallas pointed that out. That That's a good one because it said in the last days, the men's hearts would grow cold. So, I mean, how many times have we seen situations? I mean, everything's controversial. I mean, we, we can't even, like, no Muppets, no Dr. Seuss. I mean, it's all gone. And so I'm like, we got to be careful. So, so we got to pray because we don't want to judge one another by that. Because these are demons all stirring that up. We got to have, you know, love for one another. So, so doing this will help that. And then it also increases our mercy for one another. And Lord knows if you have a prophetic gift, you might not have a great strength and mercy. I'm just saying. So this is great for prophetic people because we can see in part, but when we see, we often want to in we often want to put the result, and we can't do that. that's control. So we need mercy to let God be God, just deliver the message and let people make their choices. And then it keeps us with an eternal kingdom perspective in life so we don't take ourselves too seriously because seriously it's not about us. This is about Jesus. And then it's about making his name great. And it's also about bringing many sons and daughters to him. So, um, and then, so what I want to do, I want to play, someone sent me this clip and it was amazing. So here's another thing, like growing up in the faith, We've all often said there are no junior Holy Spirits. Well, we totally believe that God doesn't have this small one he gives to kids and this one or, or like you were really bad, so you only get a little bit. You know, it's not like that. When you get born again and you get filled with the Spirit, you get all of God. And um, so someone sent me, because God's just that way, this clip of they're probably nine and ten years old. And let me tell you, they are on fire. And it just encouraged me, so I thought it might encourage you. We bind and we break every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and we break every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. And we say no more. And we say no more. Devil, you have no place over our authority. You have no place, devil. You cannot take over. You cannot take over because God already won. Wars. He won. Wars. You never won. And God, I thank you for right now. I thank you right now for this day. I thank you that you have blessed us, God. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I bind and I break every distraction. Oh, you're gonna be a whole. Oh, you're gonna be a whole. Break. 
Corinthians 2, 9 through 10, it says that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. These are the things that God is revealed to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Oh God, oh God, I pray that there is a brighter, there is a brighter Spirit, there is a brighter Spirit, the Spirit of religion, the Spirit of religion, bright, 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 bright. Religion, we come together, God, because we are hungry. We are desperate. We don't just walk up to this altar and say, I have enough. We don't walk up to this altar just because. We don't walk up to this altar just because. It's because we're hungry. It's because we're desperate for the more of this fire. Oh! There is exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask for, all that we can ever imagine. God wants to give you the spirit of His fire right now. He wants to win. We want to win. So don't prevail the gates of hell. So don't prevail the gates of hell. So don't prevail the gates of hell. Guys, that's the church. Nobody programmed them. They couldn't quote all that. That was the Holy Spirit. Did you hear their tongues? They're on fire. That's who we're supposed to be, guys. That's who we're called to be. This is the church he's coming back for. It's one that's red hot on fire in love for him. And I'm telling you, if we get, begin to press in this place of our prayer language, wherever we are, however we are, whenever we are, we are going to rise up and come alive like we've never known. The beginning of 2019, the Lord gave me a word for the year. I'm not going to quote it because I have it at home, but basically it's back to the base. He says, back to the basis. And it was not the beginning of 2019, the beginning of 2020. Little did I know what year that was going to be. But I think that's where we are. We're back to the basics. It's back to intercession and worship and praying in the spirit and evangelizing and loving our neighbor and serving each other and doing the stuff we were created to do because he loves us and he wants to use us. So, all right. Well, thank you guys. And I'm going to get... Um, Meredith, come out. I don't know how we want to do this part. Do you, um, I'll let you call it. Do you want to go into a song or do you want to? Um, I think we're going to have Robin. Robin, if you don't mind um, coming back up and if you'll stay, okay. actually. Um, what we would like to do at this point is we just want to open it up uh, to whoever wants the bat. If you haven't had the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you want the baptism of the Holy okay. Spirit, if you don't speak in tongues and you want your prayer language, if you need prayer, whatever it is that, that the Lord would, we want to or stir you. up your tongues. Yes, yeah, stir like up your tongues. Like if you feel like you're just stuck. stuck I've gotten up. there before. Absolutely. Um, a reactivation, whatever it is, right? Like this is like Nathan said, we're a training and equipping center, and this is how we want um, to help you. So if you're a minister and uh, you want to pray over people uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit or to pray in tongues, please come up and join us. Um, it is about all of us. It's not about the few that are up here. If you speak in tongues and you want to say, just praise to the Lord, pray, pray for the people that are going to come up here. And I just want to say one thing to um, some scientific evidence of what to relate to the scriptures that you were sharing is that there have been studies that show that those who pray in tongues for 20 minutes a day, it increases their immune system 30%. So you don't need 
vitamins. You don't need to go out and be in the sun. You just need to pray in the spirit. So if you're feeling sick, like I've used that so many times when I felt like a cold was coming on or something of that nature. Um, if I'm just super busy and running myself ragged, I just make sure I pray in tongues more, you know, and I'm telling you, it, it helps. It's amazing. The Lord is amazing. He has given us all that we need. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open it up at this point. Terry shirt. See, she was prepared for tonight. Speak in tongues. But we can cast out demons if you want. <laughs> just kidding. So let's just listen. Let's just do this. Let's just all pray in tongues. This, because I know probably every one of you does. So it's not, you don't have to, but let's just stir up the spirit. May I give you a word? Okay, well, I saw you on the mountaintop, and as you were singing to the Lord, I saw all of a sudden he gave you a bullhorn to be able to cry out to the people. And as you, you blew into this bullhorn, it's as if I saw the Lord's truth, the scriptures, all the scriptures that you had eaten that had become a part of you come forth and go out. And the Lord used it to amplify his word and his truth over a section, over a city. But you were a city where you were at the mountaintop and the city was below you but as the words went down it's just like you went down with them and then you were just ministering and loving on these people so I really believe that the Lord is going to send you to a place that has high mountaintops that you are going to go and you are going to intercede and you are going to pray for these people and then at the right time that the right time that the Lord gives you the wisdom is going to come and bubble forth and you're going to know exactly the little inner pockets of where to go to the community Communities, but you're going to lead these people. You are going to shepherd these people. And you are going to impart great wisdom and gifts into these people. And I believe that after you are faithful with the one, the Lord is then going to multiply and take you around. So I don't know if you like to travel or if you're already traveling for the Lord. But I really believe that that is in your future and you will be traveling and doing the Lord's work.